Hello. In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know to get up and running with a Moog Subharmonicon. The Subharmonicon is a new type of synthesizer. There is no other synthesizer that has this exact layout, and it's designed for creating whole musical ideas just on this interface. A bit like this. So the Subharmonicon is doing this by having its own sequencer section built in. We use the sequencers to create melody passages and we use the polyrhythm section here to fire off the various notes. In the middle we have six oscillators, two of which are kind of normal in the sense that you can tune them as you like, and then there are two sub-octave generators each sort of tied in a way to that first oscillator. And these sub-octave generators are creating a kind of harmonic undertone based on this first oscillator. And that sounds kind of weird and complicated, but really you just need to know you've got six oscillators and you can tune them in interesting ways. Over here we have a 24 decibel classic Moog ladder filter with resonance. Down here we have two envelope generators with just attack and decay stages. One for the filter and one for the VCA, which is loudness. There's a few different ways to actually make the thing make sound. If you look down here, we've got a few buttons. Trigger. <laughs> if I push it, will trigger the voice. So that's useful for just quickly auditioning what you're listening to, what state it's in. But because we've got a sequencer, it's worth noting there's a next button so that we can jump to the next stage and preview audition steps individually. So if you want to take your time and tune the melody carefully, you can. You literally go trigger and go next. So then, that's my new little melody. If I just want the synth to stay on and do kind of drones, if I hold down EG, it will start to flash and the synth will stay on. And you can do wonderful drone stuff, if that's your bag. Push EG again and it will stop. Note that there is a reset button to reset the sequences all back to their starting position. So then we get into the how the sequences work. There are two four-step sequences, one here and one here. And the way that I apply these sequences to the oscillators is with the sequence assign buttons here. These light up to say, do I want to assign sequencer one to control oscillator one or sub one or sub two. And conversely, on the other side, you've got a sequencer two assign. If you get into the patching here, you can actually access the sequences and send them into different places. It's just the built-in normaling that allows us to use buttons and very quickly assign sequencer one to oscillator one and two to oscillator two. What I will do is solo a couple of sounds in oscillator one. I will assign sequencer one to control oscillator one and sub one, and I will hit play. So we hear oscillator one and sub one, and if I tune sub one, there are kind of steps, as there are for the oscillator one knob. The stepping is for two reasons. 
there is a quantizer built in so that we can constrain all of the knob settings and the sequencer settings to the classic musical keyboard. We do that by making sure the one that's called 12-ET is highlighted. That is the 12 semitone equally tempered scale. There is the option of having an eight note diatonic equally tempered scale. Then there's the option of 12 step and eight step just intonation, which is a totally different tuning standard, uh, which this supports. There are four options and you can toggle this quantize to turn them off. And then you will just get completely freely tuned notes, which gets very wacky. An important point to note is that the sub octave generators aren't completely freely tunable. They're actually derived as harmonic undertones in 16 steps from oscillator one. So it often pays to have oscillator one quite high and then just listen to what sub one and sub two do and intuitively feel out a melody. So if I hold this open, so that's oscillator one, then sub one. <laughs> it's quite a strange arrangement in that regard, but you just have to feel it out. And the short answer is it can make wonderful, interesting chords and also strange inharmonic chords, completely different tunings to what we're used to. Experimentation is the key. A word on the mixer knobs here. These are used to turn up the corresponding sub and oscillator levels. It's really important to note that if you have the mixer up all the way, you get a nice analog drive. So you can make it sound very warm and fat if you turn those all the way up, or if you have them lower down, you get cleaner tones. There are waveform selectors here so that we can choose the waveform so we can have either square or saw and then in the middle is a slightly strange one what happens here is that the two sub octave generators make saws and the top one here makes a square but there is pulse width modulation of the square by sub one so if I solo oscillator one hear a strange tone that's it being pulse width modulated by this sub octave generator up here is a little octave button which constrains the range of everything from five octaves to two to one which just makes it a lot easier to tune things because it gives you a narrower scale have a smaller range from there to there. It's then much easier to get a very specific melody going. So that was oscillators and we've talked a bit about the sequencer. Let's mention these polyrhythm sections here. So in the same way that the sub octave generators are based on a sort of division of the main oscillator to create their pitch, there's a sort of funny similarity here. The polyrhythms, of which there are four, are taking the master tempo and then they are creating up to 16 divisions of it. So if I have the rhythm dials completely clockwise and then I hit play with the tempo knob in the middle, they go really fast. But as I turn the rhythm dial down, it will slow down. And it's literally dividing the master clock by two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 16. And there is a sequencer one button that is lit here. And what is happening is that I am telling rhythm one to control sequencer one and to trigger the envelopes. If I hit sequencer one for rhythm two, happens is the synth is now combining these two rhythms and sending them in 
to sequence a one. And then what I do is I adjust the rhythm until I find a kind of happy medium between the two. Turn this one down a bit maybe. And as you listen, you'll hear they're phasing. It's creating kind of a predictable rhythm, but that takes a little while to completely phase and then come out of phase, then go back into phase. And you've got four of these, so I can just combine loads of them. And it gets kind of bonkers. So a little bit of judicious use and careful setting, it's experimental, you will then find a nice satisfying rhythm. And then there's a sequencer 2 button, and that literally just allows me to send another one to control sequencer 2. So what you hear is that it sounds like we've got two passages working together. In a sense, the oscillator's sections can be quite independent. So you end up with something where you've got a kind of primary melody and a secondary melody as well. And again, you just combine these and experiment. There is a whole host of other stuff to be done when you get into modulation. So turning those rhythm dials is a way of kind of varying the melody in a way. You can think of it as a, you pick all of your pitches that you're going to work with and then the rhythm dials help you work through them in different ways. Really cool. To be clear here, there is a little dial to allow us to control how we're applying the filter envelope to the filter. And one of the like little gotcha, if I turn up the attack, there is an interesting behavior where the attack will not re-trigger until it has fully completed its cycle. Which just means that you can create really nice sort of long sustained, almost paddy things without it re-triggering every note. So that's a kind of primer to the subharmonicon. The name of the game is experimentation. Playing around, playing with different tuning, exploring different sequences, playing the polyrhythms, and then using analog voltages to turn these knobs for you virtually. That just leads to like a never ending cascade of melodies and ideas. You really can't run out of things to do with something like this. And of course, when you combine it with Mother32, DFAM, and other analog gear from other manufacturers, then your possibilities just expand exponentially. I'll link to extra content below, including jams and just performances where you can really just hear a subharmonicon being shredded and see what you think. Thanks for watching. See you next time.